Brian Powell of Iron Far here with Rory Bazio before the 2014 The North Face Ultra Trail de Mont Blanc. Mm-hmm. How's it going, Rory? It's uh, très bien. Very excited to be here. Yeah, it's going very nice. Um, just like last year, you've spent a good uh, bit of time over here in Europe. I have been over in Europe. Um, I was over in Italy in June and then had to go back for a few weeks to Tahoe and then came back out here. So yeah, it's been the uh, European adventure. I like it. What have been some of the highlights here? Um, Just getting really big, long days out in the mountains. And there seems, I don't know if I've made more friends or there's more people around to run with this year, but um, been able to do some really fun runs with a good group of people and um, then lots of days by myself. But um, yeah, just exploring the area more. I feel like I'm getting uh, to know this area of the Alps pretty well, Mm -hmm. and um, especially since last year. So I've been able to you know, do some big loops and stuff that have been pretty awesome. And I still just feel like I'm dipping my toe into what the mountains have to offer out here. But um, yeah, it's been great. Any particular highlights in the area here? Um, Let's see. Mike Foote and I ran up to uh, the top of Les Bouet last week, kind of as our last kind of Mm -hmm. bigger run, which was the perfect way to end things. It was like 360 degree views up there. It was fantastic. We were on snow. I mean, you have, you could see Mount Blanc, you could see the Matterhorn, you could see, I mean, it was just, it was phenomenal. So that was really cool. The training weekend that we all did running around Mount Blanc at the end of July was great. Was that a, um, a North Face group? Yeah, 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 just like a group of, yeah, just random group of people who did it. Um, that was really fun. Yeah, I mean, pretty much every everything has been great. So yeah, no complaints. <laughs> Um, and you've stayed healthy, happy throughout yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would feel so ungrateful not to be happy over here. <laughs> like, but healthy? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> well. healthy enough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, pretty healthy. I mean, you do approach your time in the mountains as fun, but mm-hmm. there's there's training and you mm-hmm. you put some miles in. Like, yeah. how much are you out there? Like, at the end of July, beginning of August? How well, much I don't wear a watch and I don't really calculate mileage, but I would say I would go out and be outside on my feet for like six hours a day kind of thing. But I putts, like, you know, I'm taking pictures of wildflowers. I'm going swimming in lakes if it's warm enough. I'm stopping to eat a lazy lunch. I fell asleep a couple times taking a little nap. (laughs) (laughs) When I first got over here, I was kind of still kind of jet lagged, but I was like, oh, I don't want to waste these days. So ended up running up to some lake and fell asleep for like four hours, woke up and it was like a downpour of rain on me. I was like, don't run this long on your That sounded really, really fun until the yeah, downpour. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I putts, but, um, so I'll be outside all day, but that's kind of the goal to be able to see as much as you can. And I'm not really running super hard. So, um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty so enjoyable. Great. Casual, a lot of time. casual, yeah. A lot of time, but low intensity. Yeah, pretty low intensity. Yeah, I would say, yeah, very low intensity. Yeah. With no training plan. No training. Well, I have, like, a plan in my head, but sometimes I go off course of that. Then what is the the Rory Bazio big picture plan? Um, I kind of work it out with a friend of mine. He um, has been, who used to be my cross-country ski coach. He kind of, he and I will do a big... um, training weekend at the end of May in Yosemite and we take those days just kind of plan out Mm -hmm. the summer and so we go over like okay you should maybe be getting like your longest biggest days in here and then kind of start to cut it off and maybe throw in some stuff that'll get your heart rate up at some point or maybe not so it's a very (laughs) it's a blueprint yeah made Uh, in pencil very (laughs) erasable (laughs) so speaking of getting your heart rate and your intensity up there a little bit have you done any Races are fun over here in Europe? All? No, um, I haven't done anything since La Varedo at the end of June. So that was my last race. But. And that went pretty well. Yeah, yeah, it was great. I mean, fantastic. It's like here, you know, it's like you just want to be there and explore those trails forever. I mean, it's just fantastically gorgeous um, and a really fun event. So that was kind of a good um, preview. Although I was thinking during that race, that race was like 14 or 15 hours long, mm-hmm. somewhere in that distance. And I was like, oh God, I don't know, UTMB is going to be like another 10 hours or so. You know when you're doing like something shorter and you're yeah. like, how am I going to do something longer? So, but it was good. good was that your first time at Labrador? Yeah, it was my first time. Yeah, I would go back for sure. It was, um, yeah, just a great event. And you had a great event here last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, last it just, year was really nice. It was a pretty special day. I mean, not just in yeah. the Yeah, 
Yeah, it was special for me. It's funny, like, thinking back to last year, I don't really think about, like, crossing the finish line um, and collapsing. Um, <laughs> or, I wasn't collapsing. I just wanted to sit down. Um, yeah. Uh, but there are definitely some, like, special things that kind of trigger in my brain when I think back to last year. And it's not so much the result-oriented things, but just how I felt so... Um, so like vibrant and such a sense of like flow and um, just like joy um, during some parts of that race, mm -hmm. which does not happen in every race for sure. So that made it really special. Yeah. Now, how do you get that going? Because I know when you're when I see you in Western states or whatnot, you're 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 literally joking with the aid station yeah. people and the people around you. Like, I kind of feel like you fake it till you make it. So if your mind is in a good place then you're forgetting about the discomfort or the pain you're feeling mm -hmm. in your body. You know, it's like your your behavior will follow what you're thinking. So, yeah, I do try and keep things. I mean, I feel very fortunate that I'm able to do this just, you know, because I want to. And I feel like we should all feel that way. The majority of the way the world lives is mm -hmm. not so, not like this. So um, I feel very fortunate that my body is able to, you know, take me to all these places. And I want to give that sense of gratitude back and not be, you know, a stick in the mud about it. So. Yeah. How do you do that here when you're, are there enough people that you know and English speakers and whatnot to sort of, yeah, I guess to have so. that outlet? I mean, Chamonix is like the United Nations over here. It's like, everybody's like, how's your French coming? I'm like, nobody wants to listen to my poor French. They hear me speaking. They're like, oh, American. And so they speak English <laughs> to me. So I have found during the races that most people, you can find a common language yeah. between my butchering French or Spanish. You know, some, you're usually finding a common language. At Lavaredo, were you able to find that flow or that, that mental state? Or yeah, all? definitely. I had some low points at Lavaredo, but um, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's so hard not to feel that way when you're in such an epically beautiful place. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, oh, I'm feeling so crappy, but look around me at all these beautiful mountains. So, um, yeah, I definitely. And how do the there. Dolomites compare to the Alp or to the, the Alps here? I don't know. It's pretty tough. You know, I could be happy living in either one of them. Um, I mean, are there any major, major differences in terms of... I'd say that, well, I just feel like the way um, the Dolomites, like the race at Lavaredo, you're more, uh, you get closer to the mountains and the rock. Um, and here it's more just like the massif, mm -hmm. so you're kind of around it. But there, just the rock formations are all different and the limestone and, um, yeah, both places are pretty spectacular. Yeah. Um, you were obviously in great fitness when you came to the race last year. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel in similar condition? I don't know. I have a really bad memory. I don't remember how I felt like. Well, going. then do you feel pretty strong right now? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I mean, I feel like this stuff is all a little bit of a crapshoot. Like, I've gone into races being like so gung ho, like, yeah, I'm feeling great. Um, like, test my lactate threshold right now. <laughs> um, it'll be through the roof. Uh, and then had a really crappy races. So, I mean, I feel good. I'm relaxed. But yeah, I'm really excited. Like the tapering week is always the worst because you're just like mm, getting some art projects done, you know, reading some Dostoevsky. Uh, more like Calvin and Hobbes. Um, this is a good Dostoevsky. Yeah, it right? is. Yeah, it is very gray and kind of on and on. Um, but uh, yeah, so tapering week is always hard because you're like, you want to be out running and doing things and you feel like you're just getting slower and slower as each day goes by, which is not true, but I mentally mean, it's... How does that work for you? Because, I mean, you seem to be to ride on joy and mm -hmm. experience and excitement. And how do you sit here being like, well, today's kind of a... Today is a good... Actually, you know what? If it was raining today, is great because it's the hardest time is when it's like full-on sunny out and oh, yeah. the trails are gorgeous and you're like, oh my God, I feel like I'm in jail. Um, although they probably don't have as good of a view in jails as I do out my apartment window. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, it's, you know, tapering. I think every runner probably feels that same way. Like, you're just killing time. So I've got some hobbies. It's not too bad. And actually, it's kind of nice to be able to, like, be mellow and low and just be like, you know what, I just have to sit here with my legs up for a while. So, But I'll definitely be excited for the race to start, hopefully in nice weather. Nice. Well, great chatting with you, Rory, and good yes. luck out there. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Hi, Phoenix. And a bonus question. You've been here... For a long time this uh -huh. summer, uh, in a couple different stints. Uh -huh. What's the best food you've eaten over here? Ooh, best food by far was a Nutella crepe that Mike Foote and I had at uh, Refuge des Fonds on the Tour de Fizz course, which is over in Passy. We stopped at this little refuge, and we're like, oh, should we get something, should we not? We're like, oh, two euro for a crepe, we got to. And it was like, I've been dreaming about that crepe. So yeah, fantastic. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs>